Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Jobbers and goons, where the hell have you been? No content from you, what's going on? I'll keep it short. I almost quit YouTube. I just wasn't feeling it anymore. Didn't have the drive to make content anymore. I was like, I'm just gonna finish out purchased videos and shut the channel down and move on with my life. You know, maybe this isn't best for me, but uh, I think I'm gonna try and get that drive back. The way I'm gonna do it, for about a week or so, I'm just gonna strictly make content I wanna make. I'm not gonna be doing purchase videos for the upcoming week or two. It's gonna be, well, actually not true. Some purchase videos I want to do, and those are gonna be done, but some of them will be delayed for about a week or two and then they'll drop, but I just wanna get that drive back as a creator, and so we're gonna start doing content I wanna do uh, for at least the time being until I'm ready to get back into the regular routine schedule with the creating. On top of this, uh, purchased videos will be discontinued for further notice after August. So this is the last month where you can purchase content you personally want to see on here at the coffee shop. For it to come up after that, I'm going to put it on delay and just do what I want to do and finish out the purchase videos if I haven't finished all of them by the end of August. Uh, but getting back to this, today's a video I've been wanting to do. As you guys know, I've added a Who, Will, Who Would Win? Uh, series to my channel one of the perfect uh, videos to do in my opinion is Ash Williams versus Michael Myers I think it perfectly qualifies for this series in which I put two characters against each other and kind of tell you guys who I think would win now let me give you some of the reasons why I chose this battle and by the way if you're a fan of either Ash Williams or Michael Myers run the likes up because both of them are super dope characters and I'm a personal fan of both yeah he's um he's both of them are monsters and I, I do want to give the reasons behind it for the battle uh, both are icons in horror uh, particularly in cinema both Ash and Michael Myers have found footholds in the community with franchises like Halloween and Evil Dead it's there's no contest like they're they're some of the most popular ever both are archetypes for horror characters like Ash is like the archetypal badass hero that has no uh, good reason winning what he does but he wins because it's horror baby shit happens in horror that, that's why I personally love scaling and doing horror versus a lot of it's not meant to make sense because that's the scary part of it it goes above our minds uh, but anyways getting back to this both are more complicated then people think in terms of powers, abilities, and overall what they're capable of with their extended lore. Both, in my opinion, have OD plot armor. Like Both have strong-ass plot armor, survive anything, make it through anything, and it's going to be fun as fuck seeing them battle. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do this battle. Like I said, I really think this week of content uh, is going to help me get back in the groove. And finally, Ash has fought similar characters to Michael Myers, um, so it's going to be interesting seeing what um, he will be able to do again i'm gonna be pulling from material from movies comics games stuff like that because their collective material for both makes them super interesting to analyze so without further ado grab your popcorn settle on in i hope you guys enjoy the show we have ash williams versus michael myers i'll be going over their origins and then physicals skills and combat intelligence and then finally hacks abilities and gear hope you guys enjoy i had a blast doing the research making this shout out to my boy boost willis uh from my server for helping me assemble some of the ash stuff as well as you can hit us up on my discord server it's completely free to join if you want to talk to us about this scaling as i put the script publicly available so you guys see how he scales now first we're going to go over myers then ash then we'll get to the conclusion Let's get it. Now, one of the most famous horror characters in fiction, Michael Myers, was a child with several different origin roots, from cult in nature to just naturally evil. Regardless, child Myers slaughtered his family and was locked up for years. Eventually, he would escape and begin his hunt for his sister on Halloween and will always hunt his bloodline, as well as bring nightmares to the world in his form of his terror-inspiring mask 
and Sleep Blade. Now, in terms of physicals, what does the legendary Michael Myers bring to the table? Now, given that he was born to bring nightmares to the realm and evil to the realm of living, Myers is a being who varies in physicality, but is typically always displayed as massively beyond human capabilities and just pure monstrous in terms of power and raw physical capabilities. His most notable trait is his durability. Even in the movie versions, his ability to sustain damage, not only that but recover from it as well, is well beyond anything mankind has ever shown or displayed. In fact, it's stated by his sister that defeating Michael Myers with physical attacks, physicality, anything of physical nature and power is just simply impossible. He'll come back. His speed can be dangerously deceiving, as Michael Myers can outright blitz attackers casually without them even reacting. He regularly avoids shooters um, if he chooses to, uh, chooses to, sorry for the uh, mess up right there, but the reason he doesn't really, it's kind of simple. Uh, he's a tank and he plays mind games. Like he wants you to see you can't stop him. So, and I'll get into that more later, but when he does choose to be quick, Michael Myers is deceptively fast. An entire law enforcement unit is certain that physical engagement with Michael Myers, just raw engagement is absolutely useless. He would tear through all the men and all the methods used by cops and SWAT with just pure physicality alone, according to the cop. His ability to recover is absolutely insane, as it is even acknowledged that Michael Myers has literally come back from death multiple times. Maybe you can stop him for a little bit, but forever, forget about it. Myers is evil in form that will come back anyways in whatever physical body he needs to. In conclusion for the physical round, Myers is a well-known tank, even in the movie-verse. He's a lot weaker in movie-verse in my opinion, but it's still acknowledged in the movie-verse. Regular humans stand zero chance against him and any physical L's he takes are typically just him trolling or being an ass. He truly is a force to be reckoned with once he applies himself. Now with physicals out the way, let's go over combat skill and intelligence. I think most people confuse Myers for a bumbling serial killer. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Myers is credited with essentially limitless bodies in terms of hunts and kills, as his Halloween ritual is called Endless in Nature. His experience pool, by that note, is vast and cannot be underestimated. One of his signatures is psychological warfare. Myers will use his stealth, aura, power, and intelligence to manipulate opponents into a sense of hopelessness. He creates mental nightmares and takes advantage of the moment in order to expose the mental weaknesses and flaws within his opponents. Dr. Loomis himself states that even as a child, Myers was massively beyond human and intelligence. He has also stated that it is impossible to predict and analyze uh, anything Michael Myers does or how he operates because his psyche is literally and truly beyond human conception and emotions. His skill with the blade is actually quite profound and is something we need to talk about because I, I feel like people usually associate Myers with just blind striking. Michael Myers has made uh, cuts mid-brawl in fights that doctors and surgeons later state are essentially impossible to do mid-combat. The reason for that is because they're literally surgical in nature. Like, it'd take minutes to hours to do them, and he just instantly can do it while in the heat of combat. He's peak surgical even in the midst of chaos and battle. 
do not get close enough for Myers to slice because typically most people aren't skilled enough to take those slices. It's likely he has a supernatural sense for striking. The hunting, killing, and torturous methods and feats of Myers are all so unreal that he has basically transcended to a mythical figure within his own story. Myers is truly seen as an unbeatable physical combatant. In terms of his most lethal moves, Myers loves to create separation and begin the hunt. His ability to stalk and eliminate victims is surreal, as he can get the drop on almost anyone as he pleases, and it's shown several times throughout the movies and the comics. Myers is someone that I would consider a simple but effective combatant. Most moves are lethal and to the point. He is known for impaling foes or decapitating, and will even mutilate the bodies after to better torment further opponents. He is a bully in every sense as a fighter. To wrap up skills and intelligence, Michael Myers is a brilliant killer beyond the normal IQ of any human fighter and killer. He purposely plots out battles and hunts meticulously in order to best torment his foes. He is impossible to actually predict except for his murder sprees. You know he's going to kill people, but you don't know how he's going to go about it. He is considered an apex predator and a brutal combatant by every sense and measure. Finally, for Myers, let's review his hacks, abilities, and gears. Myers is a being of nightmares, beyond human in all renditions of his character, including which has been confirmed in the movies. Myers is said to transcend every time he kills. That is, he has become far beyond anything we humans and mankind can conceive in both power and evil. This almost combative adaptation of his is stated to be so unreal that there is no longer a known way to actually defeat Michael Myers. This would include the most skilled men on earth and all weapons afforded to modern day mankind. His, moments, his most insane hacks he uses is his fear hacks. He is considered a curse in itself and has both passive and active fear hacks and manipulation which is insane. His versatility in this department alone is intricate in nature. His fear hacks and dark powers are tied to what he is as a concept. Myers is considered a being so primal that he is abstract. He is the archetypal killer. The ultimate fear in the mind of man. He's the shadow in your room that makes you cry for help and a savior. He is a nightmare made flesh. Even in crossover events that can control beings like Freddy Krueger, like Dead by Daylight, who has manhandled dualities before, Michael Myers was unfazed by this being and uncontrolled by the entity. Yet, he could grasp the hunt naturally and act in accordance with a will similar to an entity that controlled Freddy. Stupid. His abilities transcend both the physical and mental impotency and understanding. Fundamentally, he is called magical because he is beyond logic and there's really no way to justify his uh, capabilities within the verse. Michael Myers and his methods of killing and hunting transcend the physical. That is, Myers is an idea in itself that cannot be stopped via conven uh, conventional methods. He has made himself permanent through ideas and emotions. His existence has passive hacks and has literally killed upon viewing what he really is. Again, Michael Myers is confirmed to be evil given form an archetypal horror that haunts mankind. Michael Myers can not only mind hacks opponents casually, but he does not even have to be there to do so. He did so via a body he mutilated and showed a vision of him truly, which was called immutable and inconceivable in nature. 
Myers also has an intimidation and fear aura. He will passively break down his opponents before he even ever actually touches them, which is very impressive. Upon hacking you and getting to your mind, he can not only show you whatever you fear most, but he can show you death itself. It was stated to be the actual incarnation of death on earth. Again, he can trigger the mind hacks from any distance, any time, making his manipulation truly formidable. In terms of other crazy hacks, Michael Myers can make you do what he wants. It's stated in the comics that Michael Myers is a universal inevitability. That is, whatever he wishes to be, eventually it must be. His will defines reality. His awareness and combat sense is stated to be transcendental in nature. That is, at the worst, it's beyond human capability and comprehension. Sentence and cognizance are quite literally on a different level for Myers, which can be very useful in combat. Not only is it reality or reflection of his will within his stories, Michael Myers is stated to actually see the fates of his foes, change them, and manipulate the future to best fit his narratives of evil. All events are attributed to Michael knowing them and thus making them happen how he wants. Again, his control over fate and what happens in destiny for characters is reinforced throughout the comics. The characters realize that all they are, have done, and plan to do was literally dictated and foreseen by Myers. He really is a nightmare made flesh. His physical strikes also seem to be beyond human as well. In fact, one choke he used was able to casually paralyze a victim. It's possible he can apply this to anyone if he gets to them and wishes to use this. Even as a child, Michael Myers demonstrated reality warping and mind hacks. He was credited with forcing people into suicide just with his presence. He was explained to literally induce death with his aura and presence. You could literally die if Michael Myers chose for that to be the choice. He also is shown altering luck and events. In conclusion, Michael Myers was a monster even as a child. All human emotions and reasoning was void. Myers was truly a pure vessel of primal evil. The idea of Myers, the shape, can change reality to further develop his nightmare he inflicts upon the masses. This is reflected in his hacks, abilities, gear, and raw power. In the end, for his character wrapping up the Myers section, Michael Myers is one of the most slept on combatants the horror genre has to offer. As an archetypal horror villain, Myers transcended the simple killer and is beyond anything humanity can understand or defy. He simply is the nightmare, the boogeyman, and every other shadow that haunts our minds. We made and conceived Michael Myers, and as long as the evil in our mind exists, so does he. Now that we have finished the Myers portion and run the likes up if you're a Myers guy or girl, we're going to get over to Ash Williams. Originally, just a dude looking for a good time at a damn cabin Ash Williams very quickly found out that he was subjected to the demonic rule of the Necronomicon, one of the most iconic pieces of work in horror fiction. This is the Book of the Dead, a transcendental book which can connect to even the Marvel zombie universe. This book is connected to Ash now and is the cause for some of his wildest moments. Now let's go over his physical. Ash Williams has always been physically gifted since his first portrayal. This is massively enhanced due to his connection to the Necronomicon. We have seen Ash casually manhandle human to superhuman level threats, including when he easily was able to maul Darkman in a confrontation, would have likely killed him if allowed to continue fighting. 
He has been shown to casually blitz and dismantle Deadites before they can really do anything. This is impressive considering Deadites literally run through humans like they are made of tissue paper and are exceptionally tough given they ignore pain. His metal hand is notoriously powerful as well. We have seen that in grappling situations, Ash can casually bend and crush steel with this hand and likely will crush any bones if given a chance. Ash Williams has even taken hits from and sustained damage from the likes of mythical beings such as Frankenstein, Dracula, and his daughter. Entire hordes of superhuman beings can't overwhelm, wear down, or damage Ash enough to stop him, which is insanely impressive and should be attributed to his physical gifts. In conclusion for physicals, due to his ties to the Necronomicon and his fate as both an adventurer and a hero, Ash Williams has time and time again displayed he is superhuman in all physical categories. In terms of other things he offers as a physical combatant, um, from grappling to Jason Voorhees, to boxing up Spider-Man, to even brawling with deadites and gods, Ash is tough enough and fast enough to survive it all. Now, let's move on to combat skills and intelligence. From day one, since we were introduced to him, Ash Williams has been cursed to do battle with beings of evil. His years of experience has shaped his skills and approach to fights, and makes him extremely dangerous to tangle with. We have seen him casually react to Jason Voorhees and stop his ambush while Ash had to protect his passenger. This is insane given that Jason can tear through literal platoons of military soldiers like they were nothing, yet fighting Ash is completely different. His skill as a brawler is severely underrated. In one instance, we saw that in the movie verse, Ash was capable and able of striking with uh, Spider-Man. This is impressive because it staggered Spidey, who can take hits from the Hulk and keep fighting. Considering even Iron Fist struggles landing clean hits on Spidey, the fact that Ash Williams can um, and actually hit Spider-Man is insane and shows he is nasty up close. Ash Williams has no problem sneaking up on and executing high tier stealth fighters and skilled soldiers. This was made clear when he casually got the drop on Winter Soldier, who has some of the best combative training on planet Earth. Ash can uh, casually go toe to toe with and outwit beings who have existed for ages and some who even predate time. He is also no stranger to overwhelming odds or insane conditions. An army of undead? Easy. Ash can dismantle large groups with ease, and he is known for a brutal, one-shot method to his fighting. He is used to dropping bodies and keeping it pushing. Ash Williams is also a master of constantly switching up methods of attacks and angles of attacks. This is constantly shown in uh, how he varies his weapons and approach to handling different foes. In his battle with Darkman, he stated he easily could switch his arm to chainsaw mode, allowing for instant kill moves that were initially disguised as his regular strikes. Ash is also skilled with his trusty boomstick shotgun as well. These blasts are so powerful that we saw one shooter get literally launched by firing such a weapon. Considering Ash accurately totes this one-handed in battle, such a feat is actually pretty insane and is impressive showing his skills as a shot. Finally, and perhaps most impressively, we must consider the types of beings that Ash Williams has defeated and landed hits on. He fought Transcended Freddy, who had consumed the Necronomicon entirely and was above all dualities and embodied them. This includes seeing all futures, yet Matt, uh, Ash could still strike with him and hit him. In conclusion, with his blend of luck, hero's willpower, skill, and experience, Ash Williams, over time, 
has molded himself into one of the more versatile fighters you could ask for. With both melee and mid-range weapons, Ash has a solid arsenal that can be problematic for anyone trying to get up close. He has multiple attacks to cycle through and has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with transcendental beings and could outwit them and battle them. Ash is a dangerous hero and can strike with most. He is also unafraid of the kill and goes into most fights with kill methods ready to go. Now with that out the way, let's go over his hacks, abilities, and gear. Ash Williams boomstick shooting um, of a 12 gauge shotgun shell with custom ammo um, that is created um, by Ash himself. It is made in Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. This shotgun is never uh, not continuously loaded with shots to send dead eyes and all those who come after Ash back to where they came from and is one of his most trusted weapons. He also has something called the Kandarian Dagger. It has many faces and has many owners, but it is said to be the only weapons that can harm the Dark Ones themselves. Ignoring all powers, the dagger can consume the soul of those it actually kills. Now, of course, his most trusted weapon is likely his chainsaw. I mean, we've seen with this chainsaw him cut through deadites, mythical figures, go up against legends. I mean, that chainsaw is ready for anything, and Ash is constantly ready to switch over his hand to chainsaw. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the Necronomicon book and perhaps some of the things Ash can do with it in battle. The Necronomicon is a tomb of pure evil that is fully unleashed, um, and if it does, it would destroy humanity entirely. The only one who stands between that um, is Ash Williams himself. Um, evil Ash Williams, who he has successfully fought, um, spoke of the book as like archetypal evil. Um, Ash also is noted as having a strong connection to the Necronomicon and that it chose him as the savior. Um, and the Necronomicon gives Ash his chosen one abilities um, since they have intertwined destinies. Without um, Ash as the hero and savior, the Necronomicon can truly never be realized in its full potential. Um, and he was actually, with chosen one abilities, able to fight Envy itself, one of the deadly sins. Ash is also able to work the Necronomicon and warp reality itself with his words. His will um, is the book's commands and he can kind of intertwine himself to help use its dark magic. Ash is also a pretty um, sophisticated with his abilities through the Necronomicon. I think this was demonstrated when he fought someone who actually had knowledge on the Necronomicon and they attempted to blast Ash and it did nothing but knock him out. Uh, it's really hard to destroy him with that evil power because he's connected to it. Ash also has multiple times fought off possessions and mind manipulation. Torture of all kinds while being trapped inside of the Nobi can, uh, cabin. Seeing frightening um, figures to fighting himself versus Necronomicon uh, constantly. Um, the fact the book always is hurting him or his friends, trying to kill them any way possible. He's even fought his own madness and survived. I mean, there's so many hurdles this has thrown his way, and uh, he still made it through. His sheer determination and will to fight off the power of the Necronomicon makes Ash one of the greatest horror villain uh, movie fighters we've ever seen. And uh, it's to a point that he's used his powers for so long, he's fought for so long, uh, he knows exactly how ones of evil will act, react, uh, and as a result it's hard to get the drop on him. Um, his metal hand as well has been confirmed as made of titanium, which explains why it's so strong. Um, he's held his own even in the Marvel verse with his hacks, abilities, and gear. Um, and his metal hand, like I've kind of mentioned before, uh, has a multitude of weapons and useful items hidden inside of it as well as it can be used to climb large buildings or bend objects to better suit him. Um, he also knows the banishment uh, spell in the Necronomicon to BFRU 
and potentially completely remove you uh, from all consideration in combat. So, with uh, that wrapped up, to conclude Ash Williams, he is one of the greatest horror uh, iconic heroes we've ever seen. And with the combination of movies, lore, uh, comics, books, all that, Ash is far more formidable than people give it credit for and is one of the toughest heroes we have ever seen in cinema. So, uh, if these two characters, Michael Myers, Ash Williams, the shape versus the savior, if they were to clash in combat, who do I think would win? Let's go ahead and go over that, but before we do, make sure to run the likes up because this video took a lot of time and research. Again, shout out to my boy Boost for helping me out with some of the Ash stuff. But yeah, let's get into who takes what advantages and then finally who will win. Okay, so let's get into the uh, advantage portion first. So who do I think has the advantage physically? Well, speed-wise, I think Ash is quicker. I mean, the dude literally can still get hits off and damage a Freddy who can see all of reality and infinite timelines and all that and encompasses duality. Still can hit him uh, faster than Jason, all that. Myers in the comics, yes, he can teleport, disappear, all that, casually blitz people. I just think Ash is consistently faster. Uh, in terms of strength, I actually think it's pretty relative in terms of what's actually shown. I mean, we've seen Ash himself stagger Spider-Man. So anything like Myers has done isn't really as impressive as that. However, uh, Myers is consistently portrayed as superhuman in strength and hasn't really shown a limit to his strength. Uh, in the comics, it, like he didn't really need to show a limit. So we, we don't know how strong he actually is. However, uh, it, it's pretty relative. Slightly favor Ash, maybe. Durability, pretty obvious. Uh, this goes straight to Myers. With all he's endured, literally comes back from death. All these things he, he he's blatantly more durable than um, Ash uh, in terms of stamina uh, Myers has never shown any indication of being tired uh, while Ash can get tired uh, I would say the stamina department probably does favor Myers which makes sense because he's not really human uh, so in terms of the physicality department who do I favor I think it's pretty relative um, I think there's an obvious speed discrepancy with Ash. However, there's a durability and endurance discrepancy as well. So they have some uh, different factors in physicality that kind of uh, cancel out. And so as a result, I'm kind of going to call them a tie there. In terms of combat skill and intelligence, while Myers is actually freakishly accurate uh, with the knife play in certain scenarios, I just see... Ash being more skilled of a fighter, having more impressive feats as a fighter, um, and using his stealth, his quick wits, uh, all of his arsenal, and just keeping up with characters uh, and killing characters like Winter Soldier. Now, Myers might actually have an argument for being smarter, uh, considering he has like a transcendental mind, uh, manipulates fates, sees how all things will play out and dictates them. Uh, you could argue with that level of control and stuff, He's, he, he's just that high tier. Plus, obviously, he's blatantly more intelligent, considering he's beyond any human intelligence as a child. So, he's already OD and regular intelligence. Combat intelligence, does his combat intelligence make up for the gap in skill uh, and martial prowess? Per, uh, I don't think so. I think Ash would probably take it there. Now, for hacks abilities and gear now for gear obviously ash mops with the gears carrying around the necronomicon the boomstick his metal arm and an assortment of other weapons whereas myers is pulling up to the hood with the blade you know the fucking vibes like he's a simple man with a simple plan but yeah not in the gear department of this uh ash stomps now for abilities and haxes inherently myers stomps with fear hacks, mind hacks, fate manip, uh, reality warping, tanking, death, uh, being considered like an archetypal horror, horror that will always exist as long as mankind conceives of like nightmares and shit. 
he has a bunch of crazy hacks and abilities that do put him on an extreme level. Uh, all of the hacks and abilities for Ash would come from him using the Necronomicon. Uh, and they are insanely potent and a game changer, but again, they're not as easily accessible as Myers' uh, disturbingly effective hacks. So, in terms of hacks, abilities, and gear, I would call it a tie, uh, maybe slightly favoring Myers, given that he he's, can more readily access his hacks and his array of abilities. But Ash does kind of stomp him in the gear department, which kind of evens things out there. Although some of the hacks are OD'd from Myers. So, anyways, uh, getting back to this, we've gone over all three categories in which it was razor close for all of them. Uh, with a tie in physicality, with Ash taking combat skills and intelligence, and then hacks, abilities, and gear being a slight favor to Myers. So... Who wins if these two were to clash? We're going to drop them out off in an old abandoned town. With Ash, a court, uh, while consulting the Necronomicon, discovers a very dark being is lurking in this town. And Ash ain't no bitch. He's going to hunt it down and put it down. Ash would begin the search for Myers. And eventually the shape would get the drop on him beginning the battle as he would drop in and uh swiftly begin um coming at him with his knife obviously metal hand deploys chainsaw they begin their blade battle with ash punching him away uh in creating distance now at this point he would boomstick him uh a few times and seeing myers uh, kind of tank this he'd be like oh we're dealing with some evil shit uh, he would begin engaging again, uh, switching between the metal hand and the um, chainsaw in order to better combat Myers, including tearing apart the knife he was using um, and punching away Myers when he got him in a death grip. Now, at this point, uh, weird shit would start happening to Ash. Uh, like, the battle would start favoring his new opposition for some weird reason he can't really explain. Uh, and this would cause him a couple injuries, maybe a broken rib, as Myers begins landing hits, uh, picks up stuff around him to use as a weapon, as this obviously would be a nod to his fate manip. At this point, Ash would again use the boomstick, get away, uh, create distance, and use the Necronomicon. At this point, I think Myers loses. Necronomicon would allow for a high tier banishment spell, uh, an ability that could even harm the great old ones as well as he if this does not work He can use his dagger his Kandarian dagger that can even Directly kill great old ones, which I would akin something like Michael Myers to so in the end I have Ash Williams winning mid to high diff uh, The reason I have Ash winning is because he's smart enough and skilled enough to get away um from Myers, even when Myers starts fate manipping, reality warping to get an advantage, um, he has a dagger that can put down Myers, should be able to conceptually kill Myers. Um, well, what makes it interesting too is like with the fate manip and destiny manip and like controlling his story, there, it's going to be hard for Myers to do that to Ash because Ash is tied to the Necronomicon. And personally, I think the Necronomicon can hold up against Myers reality warping and possibly even usurp it so as a result Ash should be fine protecting his own story as a hero so in the end Ash Williams wins this who will win series but anyways guys thank you so much for watching it's been your boy jobbers and goons sorry I've been gone so long but I'm back ready to record and ready to bring y'all a banger and I'm dropping Goku vs Saitama who will win soon so stay tuned for that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch y'all later. Make sure uh, to join the Discord. Peace.